All right, guys, um, you'll have noticed that I did not put music in the front of this recording. Um, if there is a public outcry that it's like, no, we want the music, uh, then I'll put the music back in in the future. But um, for now, I'm going to try to take a more casual tone. I'm still, it's still going to be storytelling. I'll be getting into character, but I think that's what I need right now in order to continue forward. I feel like I uh, was too formal in my previous attempts. And I think it's a little more fun that that's kind of the attitude I want to have going forward is, uh, you know, get yourself a nice beverage to sit down and, uh, and uh, have a listen while maybe you're working on something else. And uh, hopefully this will be an enjoyable experience, even though horrible, horrible things will eventually happen to the characters because that's what happens in every good story, as my uh, ENFJ friend would say. We left off with Andrea Whistler. Her husband had been taken away by Richter Godwin and Terence Bell. Godwin and Bell are not getting along very well. They do not seem to agree, and uh, Godwin is suspicious that uh, Benjamin Whistler uh, is not actually guilty and that his wife has something more to do with it, and he wants to investigate more. Andrea, who has had many pretensions of trying to figure out how to make the crops grow better by through a genetic solution, uh, is now, this is the straw that has broken the camel's back for her, and she's not going to put up with it anymore, and she is going to get her husband back, and we left on that note. How exactly is she going to get her husband back? Well, she's not naive. She knows it's a long road and it's a long, distant project, and she doesn't fully know how she's going to do it, but she knows where to start. She knows where to start, which is through the person who has been transporting the texts to her, her contact. Let's meet her contact. She has been, uh, Andrea Whistler has been leaving messages, has been, well, in contact with her contact as she normally would be, and um, has let her contact know the situation. The contact goes by the name Backgammon. Uh, no idea if that's her real name. It is a her. Black skin, very short, spongy hair, jet black. This is the ISFP character, just so you know. Shorter than Andrea. Short, black, very short hair, kept short. Um, sort of a, a, a bit of a, a squished nose uh, and very v larger eyes and uh, a bit of a wider mouth and she is she's not very tall she doesn't wear things with sleeves on them even in the cold uh, because she has been pumping iron with Godwin he's just it's like he's a chiseled statue but with um, backgammon it's like she's not built to be strong but she decided, screw it, I'm going to be strong anyway. And so her muscles, like, don't seem to quite fit, like, the bone structure. So she's, like, really wiry, but, like, if she flexes, like, she's very, she's very powerful. Very powerfully built. Uh, very flexible, too. Uh, she doesn't wear the normal kind of villager clothes. She's, generally, she wears the same pair of clothes that she, you know, washes herself and so forth. Backgammon does not live in the village. Technically, backgammon is something very illegal. Uh, backgammon is uh, what's usually called a drifter or wanderer. She is off the grid. She is an ISFP who is off the grid. She's kind of like a glorified homeless person. Uh, I say it, I say those words very specifically because she is in this borderline benevolent totalitarian, as benevolent as a totalitarian government can be, in this kind of restrictive government, um, which is partly from necessity from the environment, uh, she is not part of the system. Um, she does not settle down. She does not assist with the farming. She just kind of wanders and often will wander through the very dangerous forest areas that the trains are built to pass through that they have not really colonized and are full of all kinds of, well, no one's totally sure 100% what is out there, but they know that it likes to kill people. 
But she apparently goes traveling through there, and she's definitely not the only one. There's a whole kind of subculture of people who have not settled down. And they are illegal, but um, it's not enforced like, oh, we'll just execute you by firing squad. It's more people just sort of are like, well, it's kind of awkward to try to, like, arrest you. So, like, just come on, man. Like, stop taking, like, can you do some work or something? Like, could you do some work around the house? Because it's like... You're kind of the main problem with them, right? Is that they're they're often seen as freeloaders because they don't live on the farms, but they come through and beg for food or like do little trinket things for food or like perform and things like this. And that is what Backgammon does. Backgammon, one of her only real possessions, she has a backpack that has like apparently everything that she feels she needs, but the main thing she has is this guitar. It's more like a ukulele. It's a little bit in between. It's a bit of a large ukulele. And uh, she plays that and she performs. And um, especially in the little village where uh, the Whistlers live, I mean, they're, they're kind of more out in what might be considered sort of the country. Um, and they're, they're more loose about it out there because, you know, you certainly don't see drifters or wanderers in the city. You don't see them wandering around in there. There they would be arrested, but out in the country, it's fine. And so Backgammon has uh, occasionally come through the country and has like played uh, on the ukulele for some some food and stuff in the uh, in the village. But where we find her now is she is in the train station. It's not very large. I almost hesitate to call it a station because it's more of just this is where you go after you have coordinated with the ticket master person that you are going to get on the train, here is where I am going. She's in the train station, backgammon. Because she has left a note uh, for Andrea through their secret messaging system, which it doesn't really matter quite how they do it, maybe they leave notes in like a tree or the equivalent of a tree in this world. She's told her, you need to leave on this day on the train and go and visit your old uh, family home. I say old family home because Andrea Whistler was not born in this settlement here. She was born in another settlement in actually a neighboring district. We won't get too into her backstory yet. Backgammon is in the train station. She pulls out her ukulele. There's, a, there's only a couple of people there. A couple of people have come off the train. Some people, because the train has just arrived, um, it's more like a metro kind of thing or a monorail. And uh, some people have gotten off and they're like hugging each other because they've been back after a long trip or they're coming to visit, you know, but it's not super, there aren't that many people. And then Andrea comes in. Backgammon does not acknowledge her, but out of the corner of her eye, she sees Andrea. Andrea goes uh, up to the train and enters. Backgammon is playing on the ukulele. He's playing a little jaunty tune. And uh, after a few moments, Backgammon the ISFP just sort of swaggers up and puts the ukulele on her back and uh, walks up onto the train. And she does have a ticket that allows her to get onto the train. And she heads on and she uh, goes uh, passing by the compartments and there are little, there are windows in the compartments and out of the corner of her eye she just kind of looks, gazes in to see, and the moment that she comes near to Andrea's little compartment she opens up the door and steps inside. Andrea jumps a little bit um, because they have rarely ever actually seen each other. Andrea, they have seen each other once or twice, but mostly it's been very kind of distant communication, so at first Andrea isn't sure if this is Batgammon. Um, but Batgammon sits down, or rather lies down on her side of the seat. Uh, Batgammon doesn't really like to sit. Batgammon does what Batgammon wants. <laughs> Batgammon leans back onto the seat, pulls out the ukulele again, looks over and says, I'm Batgammon, by the way, in case you were wondering, and starts, do 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 and Andrea just kind of sits there, tapping her fingers, and it's like, cool. Metro prepares to, to head off. It uh, takes off down the monorail. Andrea just kind of sits there, twiddling her fingers a little bit, and is kind of like, 
she wasn't told anything other than to get onto the train. Backgammon just sits there, leaned back, continues to play, and finally Andrea's kind of like, so is there like a, is there like a plan? Backgammon is nods. Seems more focused on the ukulele than anything. Andrea is kind of like, yeah, okay, could you tell me the plan that you have? And she doesn't say this, but she's thinking, and I really hope you have it. I'm, this is really weird. What are you doing? Backgammon stops playing, but doesn't put the ukulele down and kind of looks over at Andrea and says, I got it under control, honey. It's all going to be good. I'll tell you what to do. I don't want to tell you everything right now. Things might go, well, I don't know. You gotta, you gotta be loose and ready and kind of starts to play again. And Andrea, before Batgammon can really get started, Andrea is kind of like, listen, I'm sorry, but we, I don't really know you that well. And I'm very appreciative for all the things you've done, but I'm a little stressed right now. And I would hope that you'd understand why. Could you please explain to me, at least as much as you can, as to what the plan is? I'm assuming I'm not actually going back to my family home. And Batgammon is kind of like, uh, yeah, no, no. And Andrea is just very exasperated at this moment. This is not really what she was expecting. And kind of rubs her forehead and is like, okay, listen, talk to me, okay? I don't... I'm, I'm shaken here a little bit. W what are we doing? Where are we going? Can you give me any kind of indication? And Batgammon finally sets the ukulele down somewhat kind of almost not irritated looking, but maybe the equivalent of irritation because Batgammon doesn't really show that many facial expressions. Um, and Batgammon kind of just sticks, sticks her hands in her pockets and kind of looks over at Andrea. And it's like, first of all, I know what I'm doing. I've done this a number of times. I got a ticket because I've got a good uh, relationship with the, with the ticket bringer, which I've developed. It's very, very useful. You're not the first person who I've uh, taken to uh, see my friend. And Andrea's kind of like, your friend? You mean, you mean the translator, the translator of the manuscripts? And Backgammon is kind of like, yeah. Oh yeah, sorry. I'd, just kind of assumed that you would have thought that. And Andrea is like, no, I... Batgammon uh, picks up the ukulele again, and Andrea is like, no, hold on, just a second. And on... Um, but uh, Batgammon kind of just gives her a glare and picks it up anyway and starts to play, and it's like, I can talk and play at the same time, honey. And Andrea wants to say stop calling me honey, but in the name of efficiency decides instead she's going to say, okay, so where where does your friend live? How are we going to get there? And Batgammon says, listen, I don't want, I can't tell you exactly where we're going, okay? Because policy, it's very secret. It's one of a, well, I don't really want to tell you more than that, okay? Like, just smooth sailing. I'll tell you this, okay? It's not at our final destination. It's about in between. Does that satisfy? And Andrea is kind of like, we're going to go tromping through the woods. And Batgammon is like, ah, yeah, we're going to go tromping through the woods, okay? It's all going to be good. It's all going to be good. And kind of, it's like, what do you think of this tune? And Andrea is very irritated and so does not answer. And Batgammon does not seem to mind that much at first. Um, but after a few minutes, it's kind of like, come on, what do you think of this tune? Is it, I, I'm trying to make sure that this, this ukulele is, is tuned. I got into a bit of a scrape before. And uh, Andrea just kind of looks out the window. And after a few minutes, uh, they've, you know, after they've been on the, on the rail for a while, Batgammon kind of looks over at her, raises an eyebrow, and is like, so uh, why do you care so much about this bloke anyway? And uh, Andrea kind of looks at her like, because he's my husband? And Batgammon is like, uh, I've met a lot of people 
And uh, believe me, that is no guarantee of liking him. Why do you really like him? That's not a reason. That's just a coincidence. A happy coincidence, sure, but, you know. Andrea kind of leans up against the window. I love him. I want to get him back. Backgammon says, you feel really guilty, I'm assuming. And Andrea's like, well, yeah, it's my fault. And Backgammon responds, then why not turn yourself in? Andrea immediately answers, yeah, why not? Why don't I turn myself into a bunch of bandits who are trying to rob us? Because it's not right. I'm not going to acknowledge them. I'm sick and tired of acknowledging these people. They, they, keep, they, they like to come in and they like to take people away. And I'm not going to let them do that again. And maybe, I, maybe this is stupid. Maybe I'll get killed. I don't really care at this point. And frankly, I don't think I'm going to get killed. I think, I think I'm smarter than these people. I think I can figure them out. I think I'm halfway to figuring out what I want to know. And so I ask for your help because you're the only person who's illegal who I know of who's still alive anyway. Backgammon is kind of like, are you, uh, are you going to elaborate? on that last point. And Andrea is kind of like, yeah, okay, fine. My father, I grew up in a, in a different village in a different district. And there was a, do you remember were were you around at all for that blight that came through? It was a, some kind of a disease from the planet that we didn't understand. And it, it swept through it. It hit our, our settlement and we had to be quarantined. I don't know if you know anything about that. And Backgammon is kind of like, eh, there's been a couple of blights like that that they've had to deal with. I'm not quite sure I know which one you're talking about. Andrea's like, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. The point is, is, well, okay, well, mom died, um, and uh, dad was sad about it, and he tried to come up with a cure, and that meant he, so that this would never happen again to anybody else, and he, uh, uh, well, he got some books, got in trouble, serious trouble. I was maybe... 11, they took him away. I was sent to a different family. They didn't like me. I didn't like them. They, they thought I was arrogant. I probably was. I wasn't, I, I liked my dad, but I didn't really like a whole lot of other people. Um, I thought they were, they were stupid and maybe that's a horrible thing to say, but anyway, I, I didn't like them. I wanted to get away from them and backgammon, uh, finishes the sentence for Oh, so you you married him to get away. So and now you want to get him back because you're guilty. And Andrea's like, how about you shut up? Okay? I'm just I'm sorry. I'm I'm just you're you're being very you do realize you're being very very invasive right now. Um I mean, I guess it makes sense because you're trying to take me to this, to this guy, but I feel kind of in the dark right now and I don't know who to trust and, and listen, don't you start questioning my love for my husband. Okay. That's not your, I'm not, I'm not going to stand for that. Okay. And yeah, I do feel guilty, but it's, that's, I know why I'm doing this. And uh, she kind of looks out the window and is frustrated and backgammon. It's kind of like, okay, I'm sorry. Continues playing. Let's sit for a while. It's, uh, the sun starts to go down. On the door. And, uh, Andrea kind of looks over at Batgammon and is kind of like, um, what is that? Backgammon just sort of says, oh, come in. It's Richter Godwin. He's got a fantastic smile on his face as he leans up against the door uh, that he can barely fit through. And he says, well, oh, good evening, ladies. I'm sorry to, uh, to interrupt your conversation, but uh, we're just doing some inspections. I hope you don't mind. We just need to ask you a couple of questions. That's where we'll end this time. See you next week.